A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. We see less than 5% of the universe, while the rest is made up of dark energy and matter that we can't really explain or directly detect, creating an endless source of mystery that inspires a range of scientific theories. Catherine Hamans is an astrophysicist who's used some of the world's best telescopes to map out the invisible dark matter in our universe and to confront many of these theories. Today, Catherine shares that in space, as in science, it is crucial to explore what we think we see in order to find the invisible. For the last 20 years, I have been catching light in remote mountaintop observatories all the way around the world. I've been recording billion-year-old messages from galaxies. And right now, you're probably thinking, wow, she must really love galaxies. Those gorgeous, glorious, glittering whirlpools of stars, these beacons of light in our cosmos. Yeah, you'd be wrong, actually. I really hate galaxies. I don't care about them at all. You see, galaxies are worth nothing in comparison to the invisible dark side that is the true master of our universe. The reason why I've spent so much of my time collecting all of this light is because I want to interrogate it to find out about all of the darkness that that light has passed on its journey to planet Earth. Let's take a moment now to think about the stuff that we do understand. As scientists, we understand the stuff that we're made up of. We understand the air we breathe, the Earth, the moon, the sun, these beautiful galaxies that you can see. We understand all of that. But if we've done our sums right, everything that we can see in the universe accounts for less than 5% of it. Less than 5%. And the rest, the other 95%, is invisible. We can't see it, we can't touch it, but we know that it's there because of the effect it has on the things that we can see. Now, we have some good theories about this dark side of our universe, and it requires there to be two different entities. Our first entity on the dark side we call dark matter. Now, dark matter is the strong gravitational force in our universe. It likes to pull and clump everything together. Indeed, our own Milky Way galaxy, our home in the universe, is housed in a massive clump of dark matter that ensures that all of our stars in our Milky Way galaxy are nicely glued together. But dark matter has a bit of an evil twin, something that we've called dark energy, And this dark energy seems to be this mysterious, evolving source of energy in our universe that is causing our expanding universe, it's causing that expansion to get faster and faster each and every day. Now, this amazing theory explains a lot of the observations that we can make of our universe. But I'll be quite honest with you all now. We don't really understand it which is a little embarrassing, to confess that as scientists, we don't understand 95% of our universe. And uh, you might be thinking right now, well, that's, that's a bit of an epic fail as scientists and to not understand 95% of the universe. But I'd rather think of this as an amazing opportunity for discovery. Because when you don't understand something as gargantuan as 95% of the universe, it means that you are missing a key piece of the puzzle. It means that we need to rethink our understanding of physics. And it's very widely believed that our final understanding of these dark entities within our universe is going to have to involve some new physics that's going to forever change our cosmic view. It could be that Einstein's theory of gravity isn't quite as perfect as we currently think. 
Now, I'm sure you can imagine when your job is to potentially disprove Einstein and his theory of gravity. I'm sure you can imagine this is quite a competitive field in science. Yeah? There are lots of international teams around the world with their own ideas, their own heartfelt beliefs, their own experiments, um, all competing with each other. For five years, we collected light from millions of galaxies and we interrogated that light to tell us where the invisible dark matter was. Dark matter clumps together, gravity makes it clump together. But it turned out that actually dark matter was a bit more of a smooth operator than uh, people had previously thought. It wasn't quite as clumpy as people expected from this theory of there being just dark matter and dark energy in our universe. Um, Now, what an exciting day it was, and I was really looking forward to going and sharing this new exciting result with my colleagues that might inspire them to, to really rethink what they were doing. Was I going to get a Nobel Prize? <laughs> no. Was I going to meet hearty skepticism? Yeah. Um, what I wasn't expecting, though, was very aggressive levels of criticism. Well, I, I, I froze. I absolutely froze. Uh, I couldn't say anything. The last five years of my life zipped past my eyes. What have I done wrong? 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 I wanted the ground to open up and swallow me whole. Now, I'm sure you've all met criticism at some point in your career, and don't get me wrong, criticism is really important. It's how we develop, it's how we learn, it's how we grow. It's really important. But what does aggressive criticism do? How does that impact our lives? Well, I can tell you how this experience impacted me. It made me absolutely hell-bent on never, ever disagreeing with the establishment ever again, which means it's, it's not great, because uh, if one of the potential outcomes of your work is to prove Einstein wrong, and let's face it, Einstein is like the biggest cheese in the establishment, uh, then, then maybe this experience isn't really where you want to be. Let's fast forward now five years to the present day. I'm now a full professor of astrophysics. I've quadrupled my size of my galaxy collection, the methods and techniques that I use to interrogate that light, to tell me about all of the dark matter. I've improved the precision and the accuracy. But still, in the back of my head, I can hear that voice, what have you done wrong? I can feel the panic rising in my chest, and I know when I do my next analysis of my data, I'm going to have to make some decisions. How can I be sure when I make those decisions that they're the right ones? How can I be sure that my decisions aren't being impacted by this unconscious desire to agree with the establishment? How can I be sure that my decisions aren't biased? Now, we all, every single one of you, have your own unconscious biases that affect your everyday decision-making. It's very well documented now that because I'm female, you're less likely to trust what I'm saying than if I was a man saying exactly the same thing. But what can we do in our lives to make sure that our decisions aren't affected by these unconscious biases? Well, the way we did it for my team was we collected the data, uh, but then we created two other fake data sets. We shuffled them around, and only one person knew which was the truth and which two were the fakes. We analyzed all three data sets, we mapped out the dark matter, and we made very different conclusions about the mysterious dark side of our universe. We wrote three versions of our scientific papers, and only when we were absolutely ready to publish either of them, did we find out which one was the truth and published. And um, I'm pleased to say we found something very similar to what we found before. Dark matter seems to be a bit of a smooth operator. Maybe there's a third entity out there in the universe that we need to explain these observations. But to be really sure, I need more galaxies. And with over a billion galaxies, we're going to be mapping out the dark matter over the entire southern skies. We're going to be able to confront a wide range of theories to hopefully explain what on Earth is going on in the 95% of the universe we don't understand. It could be we draw such radical conclusions as there being extra dimensions, perhaps a new fundamental force, Or perhaps Einstein's theory of gravity isn't quite as perfect as we think. 
But if we come to any of those radical conclusions, you can be sure that we have done our analysis in a blind way and that it has not been biased by any of our internal beliefs about what we feel and what we want. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Glasgow, Scotland. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Glasgow. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Matilda Leone. Thanks for listening. And see you tomorrow.